Hey, welcome to the I Am Self Made Project. My name is Miguel Aguilar. I'm the CEO of the Self Made Empire, co host, the Dean Mean Fighting Machine, my right hand man, uh, the Chief Operating Officer of Self Made Training Facility and the Empire that we're building. Welcome to our very first podcast, guys. We're going to kind of go into this and introduce exactly what we're trying to do with this podcast and what exactly we're trying to offer with our podcast. Um, me and Dean came up with the idea that 2018, we're actually going to introduce the podcast with me, the CEO, and all, obviously our uh, chief operating officer, C- COO, uh, <laughs> Dean Romero. And we wanted to really elaborate and really go in depth of what exactly is the self-made movement, the brand, the, building, the, the brand that we're building within our facilities and in and out of our facilities. Um, just like our facilities, we, are, we, we cater to being not one dimensional when it comes to health and fitness. We offer everything from uh, bodybuilding, uh, you know, CrossFit, a, 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 any, anything that has to do with health and fitness, we offer it from MMA, powerlifting, Olympic lifting and such, right? So this podcast is going to mimic the same exact same thing. It, what exactly are we offering as individuals, as our team and our family grows? Uh, not being one dimensional and being completely straightforward of exactly all our setbacks, all our hurdles, but yet also all our triumphs. Um, me as the, the CEO of a growing company, um, it's not always perfect. And we really wanted to go into depth of the, the things that we do come across, the setbacks that we do have as growing a business. So if you're an entrepreneur or you're a, an employee even, you will benefit from our podcast. You will benefit um, in and out of your uh, careers and also hopefully your personal life, your, um, your endeavors. So I'm going to introduce Dean. Dean, what do you have to say about the podcast? What, do you, what are you trying to get out of this and what are we trying to elaborate, dude? Yeah, for us, I mean, it's like we talked about, what I, what I really hope people take out of this is that life isn't always perfect, business isn't always perfect, but it's not about being perfect, and that's kind of one of the things that we've been talking about a lot lately, is, you know, life is in a big part owning your fuck-ups, owning your mistakes, owning the things that you've done wrong, so that way you can get better, and that way you can do better, live a better life, be more productive, be more successful, whatever it is that you want to be, you can't be those things without setbacks, right? I mean, in a way, you know, it's like, um, you know, we do a lot of reading and and one of the things that you know you've come across and that we've talked about extensively is you know you're you're either blessed by your failures or you're blessed by your enemies or whatever you want to call it at the end of the day those things that we see as negative in our life can actually benefit us and take us to a whole nother level and so for us that's one of the main things I want people to see I mean I I come from a pretty jaded background so you in terms of the way we see the world and the way that we interact with people um, and we've had our own setbacks within our own personal relationship that now we're we've become really tight um, to the point where you know we communicate very efficiently and that's come with a lot of a lot of hard work and I want people to understand that those things that they think right now are holding them back can actually be very beneficial and they can be the thing that pushes them forward if they if they utilize it properly. Correct. And taking those situations, not letting them define an individual. Right. You know, and we've come across that. You, you're, you're talking about obviously of the setback. So let's start with um, 2017. What did self made training facility do? What did Miguel Aguilar do? What did Dean do? And then from there, we're going to obviously introduce people coming into our life. And, and obviously with the podcast is we're going to have guests. We're going to have everything that, that uh, uh, people would want to listen and hopefully get educated and learn from right? right but let's take 2017 um, <laughs> it was a, a, a hell of a year right yeah. um, we'll, we'll start off with the business aspect an epic year as a business are we are we done no we just got started we're scratching the surface in just a year alone we have how many locations now Dean like 13, we have 14 well, we have 12 going on 14 12 going on 14 uh, in just a year of franchising right and then obviously with the corporate locations and such, we've grown tremendously, but yet with growth, what comes with growth, man? You know, it, it, the setbacks, the, the hurdles, the growing pains when it comes to actually establishing a, 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 a multi-million dollar company, right? right. Um, and I personally had some major setbacks uh, with my personal development and, and the business aspect. Um, when running a business, we understand as entrepreneurs that uh, our focus is to make things the best we possibly can. And by doing that, sometimes we're going to make some mistakes along right. the way, right? A lot of times I think it's it's just 
I mean, you got to figure to be an entrepreneur. We talk about this all the time. You have to be passionate about whatever, whatever it is that you're going to do. You have to be passionate. Right. Um, and so for somebody like you, somebody like myself, we're, we're always going to have this concept of what we think things should be. And when they don't go that way, which they almost never do, I mean, they just, situations just never play out exactly as you plan them. And you just have it in your head that this has to be this way because this is the way that I've seen it. This is the way that it has to be. And those times can be frustrating or can cause, you know, a little bit of friction between yourself and other people. Um, and then you become obsessed with, yeah. with that process. And that's, it's a, I don't want to say it's a hard thing to balance because I don't think you can balance mm -hmm. it. It's, it's finding, you know, the places to, to go to those extremes and have the support system to make sure that you can go to those extremes and do what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. And that's a hard thing to do. No, oh, 100%. Especially when we have a company that is based on personal relationships. It's relationships with the other individuals, with the other entrepreneurs, because that's what we offer, obviously. If right. you don't know what self-made training facility is about, um, we are breeding entrepreneurs. We are bringing in elite personal trainers and coaches to be their own boss within a facility that has everything to offer them, right? Not only on their online business, but their one-on-one -on -one and also their personal development, right? right? So with doing that, yeah, so 2017, I think one of the major things I took out of 2017 is the personal relationship aspect. Yeah. Um, one, not everybody's Miguel, so I have to understand that, you know, and even then, I have to understand that I'm not perfect. So learning from my mistakes, learning from my flaws, to be able to, like I said, to be blessed on the, in, out of the darkness, taking those situations and elaborating on them and understanding, okay, look it, I screwed up there, but I'm not gonna let that happen again, you know? Um, as an entrepreneur with the, the, the growth of 2017, as you know, you helped me develop a lot of these franchises and a lot of these corporate locations where we have close to 350, 400 personal trainers and growing. Um, and even with our corporate locations, you know, some of the relationships that we had with our trainers, uh, when you expect them, you know, to be their best or, or, or put it this way, it's, um, not understanding their point of view right. because we're set in our mind say, Hey, no, this is the way you got to do it. Right? right. Um, that burned some relationships, you know, uh, me personally with some of my trainers that I ended up with, uh, let's take Corona, for instance, our Corona location, we had a uh, fully staffed location. Mm -hmm. Um, some of the best personal trainers in, in, in Southern California and out of a week based on my personal emotions, I lost five, five to six personal trainers yeah. based on one simple decision on um in, in based on an emotional well, it, was, it was emotional yeah. i mean it was and i think for you that's that was kind of the 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 defining part of of that year and and the things that had led up to that mm -hmm. is becoming to that point like you said where you get so caught up in the way that you think things should be that your emotions almost get the best of you. You know, it's great to, to have emotion, it's great to have passion, but you can't allow those things to control you when it comes to business, you know what I mean? And, and it's like a game or like a, um, like a boxing match or anything else. The second you get overly emotional, you're no longer competing or you're no longer performing at your best. You're performing as a slave to those emotions. And you know, in that particular situation, you, looking back, we've gone we've gone through that exact situation um, several times where we've mm -hmm. talked about what would have been the best. Now, mm -hmm. can we go back and fix it? Absolutely not. No. Did we lose some great people? A hundred percent. You know, you love those people. I love those people. But at the end of the day, the only thing we can do is look at our failures. You know, in those personal relationships, mm -hmm. and say, how can we? Like you said, how can we be better and not do that again? Correct. And that's the other thing, taking it one step further for the first time in my life as an entrepreneur where I own up to my mistakes. I've reached out to these people, apologized, not expecting anything in return, but I know at least I made my amends and then from there we move on. And we understand that that won't ever happen again. And since then, it hasn't happened. Right. We've been right. growing tremendously in positive relationships. Uh, the approach to business is is a completely different aspect of it, where we take egos also, you know, completely out of the equation as right. an entrepreneur. You know, it is uh, okay to have self awareness and self worth and understand your value, but there's also that 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 fucker sometimes gets in there, that ego, and that takes the majority of your decisions sometimes, and that's where you kind of fuck up. You know, right. so it, the the main thing as us progressing forward with our company and what what we're doing with self made training facility and the apparel and everything else that's in, uh, involved with our companies is taking that ego aspect out of it. You know, and I think and I, I think for you that's been the biggest thing. I mean, I I personally sat back and watched over the past several months 
um, more specifically in the past three or four months, you know, as, as you've identified the things that you want to change and actually changing them, which is, and I, and I told you this the other day, that's something that is, is a rare thing to see because most people either A, won't admit that, they're, that they have these issues that they, that they want to work on, let alone need to, right? And then once they do, a lot of times it's a very short lived thing, right? And, and you're still early on in that development, that personal development, but the work that you've done in that short amount of time is 100% genuine. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, and that's one thing that I told you the other day that I, I totally commend you for because I've seen other people and I've seen people, you know, attempt to make that growth mm -hmm. and it's, it's not really lasting. Mm -hmm. You know, I myself, like I said, I, I wasn't always the best person, you know, I, and I openly admit that I was kind of an asshole for a, a good portion of my life because that just was easier. It was easier to be an asshole all the mm -hmm. time than it was to, you know, try to help people and be a good person and, and run that risk that somebody you're trying to help you know, may not be there or may hurt you or whatever the case is. And when you go that route, you have to do so knowing that, yeah, people aren't always gonna like me. People are not always gonna appreciate what I do or even think that what I'm doing is any good. And that's okay. You know what I mean? Their opinion is, is totally fine. I don't have to be a slave to that opinion. And that's not gonna stop me from trying to get better. Correct. But you know, that's just their opinion. That's okay. There's people that I don't like, there's people that don't like me and the world is okay that way. It's only when we let our ego tell us otherwise that we feel the need to push that mm -hmm. and force our, our opinions our, and our viewpoints on people. Mm -hmm. and, and, and let's take it one step further so people understand where we come from, our background. So we'll, we'll, we'll touch it up real quick because we can really elaborate on our background. And as time goes on, that's what we're gonna talk about. We're gonna talk about our background, where we come from, what we did, and why we're in the position that we're in today, right? Um, real quick, um, tell us about your background. Like from, obviously, I, I know personally your background, but, but give me the, the, the setbacks, the major setbacks that created the individual who used to hate people, used to, be really not liked in a sense, right? In your, in right. your point of view, um, to where you're at today. So people understand right. when we elaborate on this stuff, you know, they understand where we come from. Right, I mean, at, at the age of, I think it was 18, 19, I tried to commit suicide, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and the funny thing is, and I tell people looking back, there was really nothing crazy in my life. Yeah, there was things that I was going through, but there were not things that other people don't go through all the time. But I just didn't know how to process it. I didn't know how to process my emotions or, or the way that I dealt with things. And as such, you know, I lost my relationship with my mom for a while, my dad, you know, both of whom were really close to me and I looked up to, you know, my, my dad was like my hero, my mom was like my best friend at the time. Um, and shortly after, you know, very shortly after, uh, my mom died and uh, my dad, you know, we had a, a big falling out due to some things that we didn't see eye to eye on. Uh, and, and I just didn't understand. I, I didn't see why he was doing the things he was doing or why we couldn't get along. I just, for the bet, you know, the, the easiest way to put it is I pushed him away uh, and I, I neglected to have a relationship with him. And, you know, during that time he died and, you know, I watched him die in front of me. Now, is that, you know, something that other people haven't gone through? Absolutely not. Um, but during that time, I also had a failed marriage. You know, there's a ton of things in and around that marriage, but at the end of the day, I wasn't happy with myself. I wasn't happy with uh, the person that I was. You know, the only thing that I really had going for me at the time was the fact that, you know, I had my kids. And on the one hand, I thought they would honestly be better off without me because I was kind of, not kind of, I was just an asshole. You know, my rule was, you know, I don't like you until you give me a reason to like you. I don't care who you are, I don't care what you do, I'm just not gonna like you. And it, I don't really care. And, um, you know, seeing that my kids one day were going to live with the example of who I was. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one day somebody said to me, you know, what, how would you feel if your daughter brought somebody home that was just like you? And I said, I wouldn't like it. Yeah. Not even a little bit. But those things made me realize that I had to change. Well, the right? thing is they didn't define you. Right. And, and the thing is up until that point, the, the one thing that I can say was the most constant in my life in, in terms of my attitude was I blamed everything on somebody else. My mom was mad at me for whatever. My dad, you know, that was on him. Uh, my ex-wife, she was, it, it was all her. Um, you know, everything was somebody else's fault. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing is when I decided to take ownership of my life, it actually started to change the way that I felt about 
life and people in general. You know, I met my wife now during that weird time in my life, you know, when I was already going through my divorce. And, you know, I loved her more than I had loved, ever loved anybody, but I pushed her away because I was terrified that she would see this person that I really was, because that's, that, it's still who I was. I was still this, this shitty person. And I figured she would see that and leave me eventually. Well, eventually, you know, we did part ways temporarily. Um, and then when we came back together, by that point, I had been trying to exactly what you were doing at the moment, really looking at myself and asking myself, what the hell can I do to be a person that I can look in the mirror and be proud of? Mm -hmm. Because at that point in my life, one of the biggest things is I couldn't even look myself in the mirror, mm -hmm. right? I it just, I looked at myself and I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm a really shitty person and I'm not happy. And I don't want to be that way anymore. And during that process, you know, her and I reconnected and then, you know, we started to kind of work on things. And during that process, she came, uh, she got diagnosed with stage four breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And you know, that, you know, it's crazy because that you would think, and in that initial moment was, it almost threw everything for a loop because yeah, here I am trying to work on myself and be this good person. I finally give, you know, myself to somebody and I'm willing to, to better myself. And this happens. Yeah. But it was a lot of my, my growth in life has been watching her, yeah. you know, watching her example of being fearless in the face of death. I mean, mm. stage four, you know, she almost died. Mm. And that's, that's, she yeah. was, I would carry her to the bathroom. Yeah. You know what I mean? I would carry her, I would have to sit her up in bed and, mm. and lay her back down, those types of things. And watching her go through that with a smile on her face mm. and being happy, I had no idea how she did it. Yeah. Um, you know, going back to church with her and finding my faith again, mm. uh, all of those things started me down the path of the person that you see now. Yeah. And I would not go back and relive any one of those yeah. years. None of them, not from 19 to 29, maybe mm. 30. 27 is when I started to try to get my life together, mm. but you know, it wasn't until like my 30s when I really started to make some strides with that. Mm. And while I would never go back and relive those years, I wouldn't trade them for anything. Yeah. You know, those are, are what set the foundation for what I've done so far. And in my opinion, if you ask me, I haven't really done much of anything yet. My yeah. greatest personal victory, I feel, yeah. is the fact that I could look at myself in the mirror and I don't hate myself. And I think you're cutting yourself short. Um, and, and the reason I say that is because obviously you've been with us for almost two years, or a little over two years, yeah, right? Yeah, a little over now. So a little over two years. You started with us as a personal trainer. Now you are helping me run a multi-million dollar company, okay? Right. So it's it's one of those things where the things that, that you think you haven't really done anything, that's where I'm gonna have to interfere and say, hey, you, you've done a lot. And if you guys don't know, uh, Dean has been promoted in a, a year, per se, from a, a, an elite personal trainer at my Corona facility to me developing a relationship with them. And even then, yeah, having some setbacks with that relationship yep. and learning from that, but yet now, you know, helping me run uh, a company that is growing in, in a, a very, uh, you know, fast speed per se um so no you, you've done a lot you know you know what i think you have to understand like you said those things i, I would say they don't define you but they've made you who you are today and why, right. that's why you're in the position that you're into today right. and if we can let our audience know that taking that negativity right taking all those setbacks taking the the things that other people do challenge and have faced on their earth that they can make something out of that, right? You know, that's the purpose of, of I would say, some of this podcast is not just about the training facility. It's not just about being an entrepreneur, but also being a, a decent human being, right? Well, it's like we say, you know, being self-made is not about money. No, you know, I think a lot of people make that assumption, especially because you know our trainers are successful, and we yeah. talk about that. Um, being self-made is not about saying I did it by myself, because, dude, I would be nowhere without you, without my wife. Uh, first and foremost, my wife, I mean, above anybody, but without the people that have supported me over the years, I mean, I would literally be nowhere, yeah. right? But being self-made is not saying I did it by myself. Being self-made is not saying um, that, oh, I make a bunch of money or you know, whatever mm -hmm. it is. None of it at the end of the day is that. Mm -hmm. And we've talked about this several times, but being self-made is a mindset. Being self-made is this is my life and I'm gonna own it. Mm -hmm. You know, some people may say, okay, well, what about God, right? Because I have, I have my faith. Yeah. Okay, well, I choose to follow God mm -hmm. and I choose to allow him in my life. Mm -hmm. And you know, it, we even talk about it all the time. God is gonna be there for me mm -hmm. 
And as long as I allow him to do that, he's gonna guide me, mm -hmm. right? And then what I do with it is up to me because you and I both, we've been in places where we don't listen. Yeah. We, we're stubborn and we decide, no, I'm gonna do what I wanna do. Yep. Uh, God's not gonna tell me what to do or nobody's gonna tell me what to do, mm -hmm. right? That's a choice also. Yep. So at the end of the day, it's not about saying, oh, I've had all these bad things happen to me. None of those even matter. Yep. It's about owning that every one of those things was my, my decision. Mm -hmm. I put myself in every one of those situations, mm -hmm. but like we say, you are the problem, mm -hmm. the solution. but you are the solution. 100%. And the thing is, it's like uh, uh, utilizing your setbacks, right? Um, to be able to uh, develop the person that you are today. And uh, the reason I wanted to talk about our history is some of our actions and some of the things that we've done with our business and our personal life has to do of our past. Right. You know, sometimes we can't develop ourselves from that. You know, I read that book, uh, The Mask of Masculinity and yeah. removing all those different masks. And that book opened up my eyes and that's why a lot of people are seeing a huge change in my personality, my approach, and my business, and my dialogue. Is that was what really set the tone for you. Was oh, 100%, dude. And I got that book from Andy Fursella's podcast, you know? And um, so if we can influence people through a podcast and we can do that, what we're doing now with our movement and how right. people really understand that self-made, like you said, has nothing to do with money. Don't get me wrong, we love it. I, you're Money's making, a great tool. Well, dude, you, you're getting six figures, you know? So it's, kind of, it's one of those things where we're, we're blessed in that aspect, right. but yet we're Absolutely. putting in the work and we're, we're doing the things that we need to do to be a successful company uh, and with ethics, morals, and, and the approach of really helping other individuals, helping other entrepreneurs, right? That happen to be personal trainers. Right. Um, and, and now going into my, my details of my story of, of why I, I consider myself self-made or the verb is self-made in a sense, and it has nothing to do with money. It really doesn't, even though I, I love things, but it's because I love the process and the journey to get those things, right? right? So um, we'll take it back real quick, you know, from the age of, you know, since I was born and I can remember my mom, psychotic woman, bipolar, very vindictive, very evil lady, right? But of course I didn't know that back then because that's my mom, you love your mom, right? right. Um, gone through the system, been, you know, drugged around from every city you can possibly think of in Riverside County, San Diego County, uh, and always living uh, in a very poor situation, right? And then by the time I uh, hit 12, she abandoned us. She, she met up with my dad. My dad actually disappeared a year prior from her leaving us. Uh, for a full year, year and a half, where he just disappeared. He was done with her shit, over it, uh, and, and disappeared. And my mom ended up relocating him in Norco, California. We meet up at the Corona uh, Park in Corona. She drops us off, says she's gonna come back, never comes back, you know? So at that point, we've been abandoned and left with our father. At that time, my father already remarried, uh, had a, his own life. He already had his own daughter. I had a step, uh, well, soon to be stepmom. Uh, they had their whole life situation. So they, you know, to be pawned off, to my father, you can only imagine what the other family felt like. They hated it, right? So they, they were very resentful towards us. They hated me and my younger brother. Uh, we're only 12 and 11 years old. Get dropped off and between 12 and 16, my father, he was a heavy alcoholic and, and drug addict, uh, but an entre entrepreneur by himself as well. You know, he's he's uh, owned multiple Yum Yum Donuts franchises, you know? So I kind of, kind of grasped some of the business aspects from my father, but drug addict, alcoholic, you know? So between 12 and 16, he became very, very heavy involved with drugs and alcohol. And by the time I was 16, uh, he committed a crime that landed him in prison and they sentenced him for, for what was it, 22 years. Um, I was in high school, a sophomore going into my junior year. Uh, my stepmother, the day that they were gonna sentence him, we were supposed to go to court to go say our goodbyes. She never picked us up from school. She went to the courts, they sentenced him. The day she came back, Doors were locked, things were closed. Miguel, Julio, my brother, uh, you guys gotta move out. We can't right. afford to keep you. Um, we've been in the system before, so me and my brother didn't wanna tell the school. So we ended up driving around, went to the gas station, made a bunch of phone calls to our friends, trying to see if we could spend the night somewhere. Uh, and, and it didn't happen, so the first night we slept in the alleyway. You know, So I was homeless by the time I was 16. And I did that for about six to eight months, give or take. Bounced around from house to house, friends to friends. Um, I had a friend, Chris Gillespie, who took me in let me stay at his garage in his house, uh, and actually his house, his father let me sleep on the floor where, where his bedroom was. They kind of helped me get on my feet, they gave me a job, uh, they got me a job at homegrocery.com working in the graveyard from midnight to 10, and luckily my junior senior year only had four classes and three classes, so I did that for my first two years. By the time I was 17, I had my own apartment, you know? Um, but since then, uh, I still always battled those situations, you know? Uh, drugs and alcohol became a part of my life. 
for a very long time. I, I, I barely had two and a half years sobriety. Um, and that was by choice, you know, because I didn't want to lead by example. I didn't want to own a facility for one, a training facility that promotes and advocates health and fitness. But yet when I looked it in the mirror, I see this hypocrite, right? right? So I decided to quit. I decided to quit drugs and alcohol. It's just not going to be a part of my life. And like I said, I have two, two and a half years of sobriety. So with this podcast, we're going to elaborate over time a lot of these things that we've done and taking those negative aspects and turning it into something super positive. You know, I am self-made, but if, if you, obviously you know, but if an audience doesn't know, we, we call it the self-made family. You know, you're taking, it's almost like an oxymoron. You're taking one individual word and adding a family to it. And a lot of our symbols have a circle around them because it's a unity. Um, and that's what we are. We're a self-made family. We're like-minded individuals striving for success, whether it be personal or business, right? right. So as we get into these podcasts and, and we elaborate on the relationships that we're building, the relationships that obviously we, we're kind of jaded, um, and, and, and trying to help people understand that, you know, in business, no one is perfect. Uh, in building an empire, you're definitely not going to be perfect. You're going to yeah. learn from a lot of your mistakes. Um, but yet, surrounding yourself with like-minded individuals is definitely going to help you strive to the whole, a whole nother level when it comes to business uh, and, and, and personal relationships, right? So with, with now everybody knowing our, our background, and that was in a nutshell, that was quick. Yeah, I mean, we was... can really elaborate on a lot of bad things that's happened, but we won't get into depth to that today. But knowing where we come from and where we're at today, you know, uh, barely graduated high school, uh, didn't go to college. I dropped out of college. You dropped out of college, <laughs> you know, so and now like I said, owning a, a multi-million dollar company and taking uh, a concept that has been around for ages. Right. People don't understand. Everyone, when people come up to me and say, I was like, you guys were geniuses. You developed something so amazing, right? And I always tell them, I was like, you know, this has been around for a very, very long time. Yeah. I don't try to take credit that I developed the uh, independent contractor system. Right, because I, I worked with an independent contractor as a trainer for a few years before yeah. I found self-made. Right. right. Yeah, so, but taking that concept, right? When everybody's so fucking lazy to work on something that's already there, but not understanding that, dude, that can be so fucking rad if you right. just did this. Or, hey, if you just added this, this would be this. So adding the value that we have in the last three and a half years, because when we first started, yeah, it was just private personal training, that's it. But then we included online nutrition. Yeah, it was very training. similar to, to what it was back then in, in, in any other place. And Correct. Then, like you said, you added you know, the, the online nutrition and then you know, we brought on the the online uh, training aspect yep. of it, and then we added the academy and started getting these people certified for free, yep. uh, providing them. You know, kind of. You know, what's funny is, is is we talk about learning from our mistakes and the academy. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, we developed the academy, which for people that, that don't know, I mean, you basically yeah. said, "Hey, I want this academy." You know, whatever. And I had no idea what I was doing, so I started calling people. You know, yeah. what do you guys do, or what do you guys offer? And then for me, what I realized was none of that totally worked for you know what you had said that you yeah. wanted and the biggest you know the biggest miss that i think a lot of trainers had was that they didn't understand the business part of it and i know for me that's where i struggled really bad when i went on my own mm -hmm. you know what i mean i went from training in corporate locations where i mean i knew i, I had that system down to a science mm -hmm. and then as soon as i started losing a few clients here and there you know when uh my wife was going through breast cancer, you know, I wasn't really around to train people as often. Mm -hmm. So I lost clients. And then when she went into remission, I was like, okay, I need to get this, you know, back to full gear. And it was like, I look around, there's nobody there. Yeah. And it was like, oh shit, what do I do? And we struggled for a while. I mean, we were broke, like broke, broke. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know how the hell I'm gonna pay rent broke mm -hmm. and keep the light on, you know? And we were like, borrowing money for for groceries type mm. of broke two dollar cereal because that's your kids can eat that all day yeah um and and that shit was was rough you know what i mean getting getting eviction notices and yeah. stuff and going okay well here i am working at a you know following my dream and i'm a business owner but i don't have a pot to piss in yeah you know and then finally starting to figure that out and but it took me three years mm -hmm. to figure those things out so when we developed the academy that's what it was was we based it on all the mistakes you know, not to make. So yeah. we just, we went in reverse. So we said, yeah. so I made this mistake. I didn't know how to market. So yeah. we'll teach people how to market. Yeah. You know, I don't, I did not know how to run a business in terms of, um, you know, uh, thank God I had a good CPA that I, I met, you mm -hmm. know, that was a good friend of mine. And he saved my life yeah. uh, in, in terms of getting my, my business structured. But 
most people don't know how to do that. So, mm -hmm. you know, we try to teach them how to do that. Well, you know, even like I'll, I'll elaborate on that because uh, when I first got into entrepreneurship, I, I've been a real estate agent since 2003. Okay. Um, and going from my construction background as a commercial plumber to real estate, two different aspects. Right. I'm getting paid for my time here. I'm 100% commissions, right? right? So going into that business, um, learning trial and error, learning the business. One, I never knew what real estate was, but I was actually really good at communications and getting deals done. I was a numbers guy, right? Um, so knowing that aspect and going into that, my first year in real estate, I made 150 grand. And this is in 2003 to a 23-year-old kid. Yeah, that's... I was like, that's a lot of fucking money, right? And of course, I blew it all on drugs, alcohol, and true religion jeans. It's fucking, it's <laughs> true, the truth. Those true religions, bro. Nordstrom was uh, <laughs> my, my favorite, you know, and I barely, I, I, I did, I still had a piece of shit car and everything else, but by making that much money as an independent contractor, when it came to CPA stuff, right. uh, dude, I ended up having to pay like $40,000 in taxes that yep. I didn't have at that time. Right. So to elaborate on what the academy does, like we even teach them accounting, right. you know, marketing, retention, accounting, our CPAs, our corporate CPAs will come in and teach these guys. Right. So, you know, when we talk about the academy, it's not just the certification aspect of it. We want people to know that we want people to understand that what we're offering is not only certification, but also entrepreneurship courses, right. because going into entrepreneurship, People don't know what to expect. They don't know they oh, yeah. need a business license. They don't need know that they need insurance. So we want people to understand that the things that we're bringing to the table are of value. And they're from our own mistakes. I mean, yeah. we're, we're basically saying here, here's all the mistakes that we made. Mm -hmm. Here's basically all the fuck ups. Yep. Now here's how you avoid them. Yep. You know, and then that way, whatever mistakes they make, now they, they can be that much more successful, yeah. that much faster. You know, where it took me three years to get to the point where I was making a, like, by the time I, I took this position, you know, uh, as a trainer and self-made, I was finally in a position where I was saving money. I'd yeah. never saved money in my life before. Yeah, I remember. Um, I, I learned to take vacations, remember? You took yeah. a, a, a trip. Yeah. And came back, uh, when I first tried to take vacation, I came back broke, but then by the end of it, you know, when I was, when I took this position, it was like, I finally managed to, to learn how to save money. Mm -hmm. You taught me basically how much of each transaction to start putting away in a mm -hmm. separate account. So I did that. Um, I started paying off debt. I started doing all these things that in my head, like growing up, you know, and not knowing any better. Mm -hmm. I, I just thought everybody was in debt all the time and yeah. everybody lived paycheck to paycheck. That's just what I knew and what I, what I was comfortable with. And that was okay with me. Yeah. So going from that to actually putting myself in that position as a, as a personal trainer, mm -hmm. I mean, the type of job where people say, oh, get a real job or, yeah. you know, how can you do that? Um, how can to you the make point, it a career? Oh yeah, I mean, my mother-in-law basically told me when she, when we first started kind of talking and stuff, when she found out what I did, she was like, how are you gonna support a family like that? Yeah. And, and I tried to explain it, but she, you know, she didn't understand. Um, and then by the end of it, when I told her I'm taking this position, she's like, oh my God, but you worked so hard to build that business yeah. and you've been so successful at it. Like, are you sure that it's a good decision? You know, to make a believer out of somebody like her, who's very, yeah. like you said, yeah, like no, a I'm numbers better. person yes. by the numbers and very, very practical. Yes. Um, and that was, that was just a pretty cool place to be in, mm -hmm. you know, but that took me three years, yeah. you know, of, of being in business for myself as, as a personal trainer, mm -hmm. where these guys, you know, the idea and the goal is to get them, you know, in, in a quarter of that time yeah. uh, to that position if possible. And I think a lot of them that are implementing those systems are doing that. Um, and that's, you know, the reason that we do it, like you say, is, it's not about, and this is where the self-made family part of it comes in. Like these are our people. Yes. We can't be successful. I don't have a job without them at this yeah. point. Like I'm more reliant on them mm -hmm. at this point than I am on myself. So yeah. it, it only, you know, does, it only makes sense for us to invest as much time and energy into them as we can. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we do it because we want them to be successful and it feels good. Like it feels really cool to get text messages or phone calls of people saying yeah. like, dude, like I, I finally made X amount of money or I finally bought this or I finally was able to, to pay my rent like yeah. on time for the first time. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's funny because little shit like that goes a long way. Like some people, they don't know what it is to, to pay bills on time. I was one of them, yeah. dude. I, I knew how to get around like, oh, this one will go 30 before that they'll shut my phone off. You this knew how to actually manage late payments over anything oh, yeah. else. Then I, I learned how to be broke in. so well that it was, I didn't like it, but it was comfortable. I tell yeah. people all the time, I was so comfortable being broke. Like I could work the system yeah, yeah, yeah. so well, yeah. right? But then to actually make a little bit of money was weird. Like, so it's crazy. I, I can pay that bill yeah. like right now. 
right. like I don't have to have a past due balance. But even weird. then, like like you said, I can pay that bill or or making so much money that you don't know how much you're making per month, you know, because it's it's coming in very fluent. Yeah, that was that was a problem. Really because on. of the systems we have, but look at even then, like what we established, we we created an Excel spreadsheet that's already formulated for these guys to be yeah. able to manage a track their money of what exactly is coming in and what their net and what their gross income is. And the reason we do that is for people just like you that yeah. didn't have those aspects, right? Yeah. And, and that's why we developed that. And we wanted those spreadsheets. Like like I told you when I when I first hired you, I eventually want to sit back and just look at spreadsheets, right. you know, because I want to be able to see where we're at and what we're doing. And I'm real big on that because I'm a you're almost guy. getting to that point. Yeah, well, I'm almost there, dude. You know, to, to, to be where I'm at today, I'm super thankful. Um, the things that we're going to recap on 2017 is, you know, all those setbacks have created where we're at today. Yeah. And um, it's unfortunate those setbacks have because it did burn some relationships. I had a very good uh, partner in my nutrition company that yeah. uh, I burned that relationship. But I learned from that as well. And I also made amends with them as well. You know, it's, it's very limited in the sense of the things that we've done that are negatively, okay. but they're really impactful. You know, because they make an impact on an individual. And it got to the point like two months ago, month and a half ago, I, I didn't want to look at myself in the mirror, you know. Mm -hmm. And I'm promoting these 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 things that I want people to gravitate and understand, but yet I'm not living it myself. Right. So now it's look at 2018 is to one progress very transparent. That's the reason for this podcast. Yeah. We're gonna elaborate on everything that we're doing at Self Made. It's to the point where this company is bigger than us, dude. Yeah, and you it know? has to be. It has to be. It, and it's, it's, it's about everybody. We got, like I say, almost 400 personal trainers that we mentor and work with through our franchises and, and corporate locations, right? Uh, each each one of them are important to us. Yeah, our business is ran on their success. We are investing in people for their success. Because whether they make 150, 100 grand a year as personal trainers, we only get a certain portion based on what we charge them for rent, right? That's it. But yet we add so many tools, so many systems, so many values. And as time goes on with our podcast, we're going to eventually really evolve and, and let people know what we do, right? right. Um, but the main purpose of this podcast is really to be transparent and let people understand what is the self-made project. What is I am the self-made project, right? So for us to close on this, right? And, 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 and as I says, if you guys like the podcast and you guys like what we're doing, make sure you, that you guys subscribe because we're just doing this out of our own time, just like anything else. We want to make an impact in people, right? right? But I'm going to ask you and then I'll answer after you're done. But what is the I Am Self Made Project? The I Am Self Made Project or, or I Am Self Made yeah. is exactly like I said, it's, it's that mindset. It's understanding that, you know what? I'm in control of my choices. That's the only control that I have. I can't control whether it rains tomorrow. I can't control, you know, a lot of the things in the world that happen, but I control my choices. Mm -hmm. And by that and that alone, I am self-made, mm -hmm. right? And being a part of self-made to me has changed my life to give me, give my family a future that I honestly just stopped believing in as I became an adult. Mm -hmm. As I became an adult, I just realized success wasn't for me. And you know, being a part of this movement and going through all these things have taught me that I set the bar way too low. I've accomplished every one of my personal goals like this year mm -hmm. for my life. Yeah. So now I'm in the process. I'm like, okay, now I have to create bigger, bigger goals. Goals, yeah. goals that I, I there's no way that I can wrap my head around yet. So that way I have something to work yeah. for. That's I mean, self-made gave being self-made gave me a life. Yeah. yeah, it gave me an opportunity to have something I never imagined. Yeah. And, and for me, the I am self-made, um, a lot of it's gratitude. I'm, I'm grateful for what I have and what I've done, but I'm not satisfied. Right. You know, um, being self-made uh, to me has, yet again, nothing has to do with materialistic items or, or money. It has to do with the self-development, self-awareness of what a person's capabilities are. Right? We as human beings have ultimate power, not only in our mind, our soul, and our, and our physical uh, power, to be able to do things that you, is you, some people can't fathom. Like mind you said, blowing. mind blowing, right? People always ask me, like, but Miguel, you got this, you got this, aren't you happy? Fuck yeah, I'm happy. But am I, am I content? Am I satisfied? No. What is the next chapter? What is, how, how, how big can my dreams get? Right. right? I've only scratched the surface of where I want to be, and I'm 36 years old now. I've been an entrepreneur for roughly about 10 to 15 years, give or take of what you want to consider entrepreneur. If you want to talk about slang and drugs and all that stuff, that's an entrepreneur as well, but that was in my younger days, <laughs> yeah. you know? But now it's to the point where, look it, I am not done. 
Being self-made means not being done, being always striving for success, striving for success in your personal and your business life. And yet again, we'll go back to the personal, you're not always, always gonna be perfect. I'm gonna win some battles and I'm gonna lose some battles. And we'll disclose those as time goes on because I think those are very valuable to our movement and to our right. brand. You know, taking those situations and not letting things define you, but in, in, if anything promotes you to the next chapter. Right. You know, what is the destiny of self-made? We're yet to find out. We're, we're barely in our yeah, first year. We got year. some big ass goals for it. That's for we sure. got big ass goals. So we'll talk about the goals real quick, and we'll end up our, our first podcast. But goals for 2018, for personally, for uh, as a company, 2018 is to get to 24 franchises by the end of uh, December of next year. Of uh, this year, I'm sorry. Uh, also, developing a full staff when it comes to, to so self managers, those. so we can manage those <laughs> and be able to really scale up. We've already accomplished hiring a marketing. We, we got so many things that are doing on the business aspect to scale to the whole nother level and to be able to help more personal trainers and yeah. coaches. To bring people along for the ride. Uh, bring them for the ride. You know, I always talk about through my post and, and through my social media, Instagram uh, and Facebook uh, is you're not successful unless you take other people with you. Yeah. You know, and I think I'm doing my part on that aspect. Yeah. And, and sometimes um, uh, somebody will see that or somebody won't see that as, as value. But to me, that's very, very, very valuable, especially coming from where I come from. If I can help another individual like yourself be where you're at today, I've done my part. And that's greater than the money aspect of it. It's serving other people to be able to help them in their situations, their, their, their setbacks, and be able to say, hey, look, you can become a triumph out of that, yeah. right? So that is what Self Made For Us is in, in 2018, that's what we're doing. We're gonna be striving, um, going to international. I got a, a trip planned for Russia and Dubai in, in the summer that I was supposed to take actually last summer, but we're so busy developing corporate headquarters. Um, largest private training facility in the United States, 18,000 square feet, strictly private personal training and coaching. Uh, so we're very proud of that for 2018. Um, and, and, and then my personal life, you know? Be able to develop myself as a better father, better husband, better better everything that I, I possibly can, uh, but also a better friend. You yep. know, um, that is where I hindered a lot because I focused so much on business that I let some of my friendships go uh, or hindered those relationships. So that's that's my personal goal for 2017, 2018, I mean, 2018 and forward. And what about you? For 2018, like you said, my, my main thing is I want to bring other people along. Like this, this movement has changed my life so much um, and the company has changed my life so much. I want other people that, you know, that I mentor, that I work with to, to experience that on a tremendous level. Uh, I wanna see our brand grow into an international brand um, on a level that I can't even totally fathom or imagine yet. Uh, and I wanna see, for you, I wanna be able to see um, those changes that you want to happen. And the only way those happen is if I do a good enough job at my job mm -hmm. to make sure you have the time to do those things. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, like you said, we have to have our systems in place to where as we grow to that larger franchise you know, model, all of our franchises have everything that they need to say, you know what, I'm taking, I'm good, I'm happy. Mm -hmm. And this is, I'm so glad I made this yep. decision. If every one of my franchise owners can say, I'm happy that I made this decision, and all of the people that come along for that ride can say that they changed their life. And at the same exact time, we can be a, an international brand that people the world over, mm -hmm. you see people all over the world wearing our clothes, repping mm -hmm. our brand and being self-made, then that's that's 2018 that's and forward, yeah. like you said. 100%, dude. Yeah. So we'll, we'll wrap up with this. We appreciate you guys listening. And if you guys uh, can uh, do us a big favor is, is definitely share, subscribe, uh, let people know about this podcast, and if it's something that's going to be instrumental to your success, uh, we would love to hear from you. Make, make comments, whatever you guys can do to let us know what you guys also want to hear from yeah. this podcast it would be amazing for us. Gives us content, but I, ideally, we're just going to base it off, you know, a, as much as we can through the company, through our personal lives, and see what we can do to motivate other people to be decent human beings. To right? be self-made. To be self-made. All right, guys, thank you guys for joining. Uh, until next time, we'll talk to you soon. Miguel Aguilar, CEO. And uh, my boy, Dean, peace out.